G'day guys, this is the Barker Pass paper up to, so we're up to question uh, 15B now, so it's towards the business end of things, I'll just write that, 15B, and it's a, this is an induction question, and induction questions are just awesome, I reckon, because they, they, they just rely on a really clever premise, it's just absolutely ingenious, so I'll briefly explain the, the process of mathematical induction, um, and then, then talk about why it works, and then, and then we'll just crack on with the question. So, we're given a statement like this. So, this is the one we're going to do. So, a half plus two on four plus three on eight plus all the way up to this. So, you can tell that the, the numbers on the left hand, on the numerators are going up by one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to n on the top. And the bottom ones are two to the power of n. So, you know, it's two to the power of one, two to the power of two, two to the power of three, and, and so on. And we've got to prove that this left hand side equals two minus n plus two all over two n. Oh, 2 to the power of n. Beautiful. So the, the process of mathematical induction, if you haven't seen it before, is your, your first job is we prove that this statement is true for n equals 1. So I've got a little diagram here, so we'll prove it's true for n equals 1. So that so we've proved it true for there. Now, we assume it's true for n equals k. So it's a pretty good assumption because we've just proved it's true for one number, n equals 1. Um, and now we're going to just assume it's true for n equals k. And then, we, and then we try and prove it true for the number one bigger than that. So what, what's that, what that's doing is we're saying, okay, we've proved it's true for n equals 1, right? Now we're going to assume it's true for n equals k. And if it is true when n equals k, and we can do this step three and we, we succeed, it's true for the number one bigger than that. So it, therefore, it, because it's true for one, it's true for the number one bigger than that too. Beautiful. But because it's true for the number two, it's true for n equals 1 bigger than that, which is n equals 3. And because it's true for n equals 3, it's true for the number 1 bigger than that, which is n equals 4. And you get this runaway effect, this, this kind of like this domino effect. And it ends up being true for all integers um, greater than or equal to, to what we proved to, n equals 1. So I reckon that's just like the cleverest thing in the world. So this is the thing that we've got to prove here. Um, and I've just rewritten it, so it's just, just the, what we've got to prove again. So step 1. So we're going to prove true when n equals 1. So the left-hand side, when we just chuck 1 into here, we're just going to get 1 on the top over 2 to the power of 1. So we're just going to get uh, a half. So that's what the left-hand side is. Too easy. The right-hand side we get, so we over here now, this what's in red, we're putting in n equals 1. So we're going to get 2. So that's where that comes from, minus 1 plus 2 all over 2 because it's just 2 to the power of 1. Cool. And now we're going to have 1 plus 2 is going to be 3 on 2. So 2 minus 3 on 2, 3 on 2 is, you know, of course, a half. Uh, 1, 1, oh, sorry, 1.5. So 2 minus 1.5 is a half. Beautiful. So therefore, the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Beautiful. So I'd say, therefore, um, therefore uh, the, statement, the statement is true, is true when n equals 1. Beautiful. So that's step one done. Cool. Step one done. Too easy. So now we're up to step two. So we just got to assume it's true when n equals k. So this step's real easy. So what we're just doing is, he remember he was, so w what we've done is, where well, there used to be n's here, we've just put a k in. So remember from the question, this, this is exactly what we've just written there, except wherever we've seen an n, we've just put a k. Cool. So, so now, so we've assumed this to be true, right? So this is just an assumption we've made. We'll put n equals to k. Beautiful. Now, here's the real meat of the question. So we've got to prove it true for n equals k plus 1. And if we can do this, then we're in action. So, so what we're going to, what's typical with these induction questions is you, you, you write, so you start off with the left-hand side. So you say the left-hand side, and you, you'll start off with this, and then you're going to try and bash it into form to get to the right-hand side. And the, you, what you have to do is usually you have to make a substitution and you have to, that substitution comes from your assumption. You're using your assumption in this proving step. Too easy. So the left-hand side uh, equals, so I'll just rewrite this in pink, half plus two on four plus three on eight plus dot, 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 K over two K. And then we've got this cheeky little green number. Cool. So, so the reason, so what we've done here, of course, so this is, we've got to prove it true for n equals k plus 1. So this is what we had up to here. And then we've added, so the next term, so this is the kth term. Beautiful. So this next term here will be the k plus 1th term. Beautiful. So that's, that's what we've got here. 
So so this pink and this this kind of dark bluey color, they're they're the same, but then we've just added this extra term. And this K here, we've we've had K plus one because we put N equals to K plus one just here. Now, what the reason what's going on here, why there's a plus three, is I've just put a K plus one in here. And so it's been K plus one plus two, so that's just K plus three. So that's where I've I've got this this statement here. And this statement here is the one that we have to prove. We have to try and make prove this statement this on this level here. Cool. So so uh, yep, so then we've had k plus 1 all over 2 to the k plus 1. Cool. Now, we're going to make that little assumption that I was talking about earlier. So, from our assumption, you can see that, so this, where we're up to here, sorry, that's a really bad diagram, just, just this little bit here is the same thing as this, right? So, you can see that. So, we can just substitute this pink thing in for just this this light pink color here cool so what we're going to do is so what was that dark pink thing this is kind of like a what's that called magenta so that's two so we had two minus uh, k plus two minus k plus two all over it was two to the k wasn't it two to the k too easy two to the power of k wonderful and then don't forget this green term that we had so we had uh, plus k plus 1 all over 2 to the k plus 1. Cool. So remember, this is the line that this is the one that we're trying to do. We're trying to prove this line here. Cool. So the right hand side there is we're going to have this blue thing. So there's a k plus 1 on the bottom. So you can tell this, this thing here doesn't have a k plus 1 on the, on the bottom. So we're going to have to try and times everything by 2. But this 2 that we've got just here. That's, that's looking good because we've got a 2 just here. So that's cool. So it's just just these two last terms we've kind of mesh into the same thing. So we're going to get 2 minus. Now, I'm going to times the top by 2. And so we're going to get minus uh, 2k. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go plus and then minus 2k minus 4. So that minus is just expanded out of times everything by 2. And I'm going to get 2. So if I times this by 2 here, 2 to the 1, what we're going to get is these indices are going to add and so we're going to get 2 to the k plus 1. Beautiful. So I've times this bottom by 2 and I've also times the top by 2. So that's because, you know, everything, this is now minus 2k, this is now 2k, and this is now 4, 4. So I've times that by 2. And now the reason we've done that is, why that, well, that's cool, is now we've got this common denominator. Juicy. 2 to the k plus 1. Love it. Cool, cool. So now we're just going to uh, add like terms. So we're going to get 2 uh, plus, so we're going to get k minus 2k. So it's going to be uh, minus k. And we're going to get minus 4 plus 1. So that's going to be minus 3 all over 2 to the k plus 1. Sweet. So look where we're going to go. We're really close. So we've got a k plus 3. We've just got a minus out the front here. And these, these the numerator is positive. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a minus out. Uh, then we're in action. We're laughing. So then 2, and then we're going to put a minus here. We're going to get k plus 3. So I've just popped that minus, taken a minus out of the top and just put it out the front, all over 2 to the k plus 1. And beautiful, look at this. So rem remember with this, it's 2 minus k plus 3 all over 2k plus 1. That's what we had to do. 2 minus k plus 3 all over 2 to the k plus 1. So we've had our left-hand side equals equals this step, which equals this, which equals this, which equals all the way down here, which equals the right-hand side. Beautiful. So I, I will write, therefore, um, I'll do a different color. Therefore, the statement is true. The statement is true. So this is probably something very exciting for you guys. Is true when n equals k plus 1. When n equals k plus 1. Cool. So, so, so that's the third step done. Beautiful. So we've done. We've, we've made that assumption. That's that was not worth writing about. That that second step. That's really easy. And we've now done the third one. But so we've proved it true when n equals one. Then we've assumed it's true when n equals k. And then using this assumption of in step two, we've proved it true when n equals k plus one. And the fourth step we're doing is just explaining what we've done. So we're saying I proved the statement was true when n equals one. I then show that if the statement was true when n equals k, then it is also true for n equals k plus 1. Hence, the statement is true for n equals 1, because we, we proved that 
initially. And then because it's true for one, it's true for the number one bigger than that. So it's true for n equals two. And the same thing again, because it's true for n equals two, it's true for the statement one bigger than that, the number one bigger than that. So it's n equals three and so on. Beautiful. So this is really interesting stuff. And um, I think, but like, just think about this, like humans will die one day, you know, our, our planet's going to get swallowed by, by our sun when it, when it turns into a red giant. But now that we've proved this statement, you know, it, humans can die. This statement will always be true and it will outlast our species now that we've proved it. Just something I think is very interesting to think about. Um, all right, guys, have a good night and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next vid.